I am a chemist, part of my PhD was on supramolecular chemistry, and it's pretty relevant to why sulfate versus sulfate free is not really that important. There's so much misunderstanding of how hair science works, and I think one of the big reasons is hair products aren't really about individual ingredients. The overall formulation is really important, and we say that with skincare, but it is so much more the case with hair care. How shampoos work, for example, it is a complex supramolecular process. Different ingredients have to coordinate to clean, it's like molecular choreography. These four diagrams show four different ways that shampoos clean, the pink tadpoles are the surfactants. All four of these are happening on your hair at the same time to different extents depending on the shampoo formula, what sort of stuff is getting removed from your hair, is it dirt, is it oil, is it conditioner residue, whether you've just put the shampoo on your hair and it's really concentrated or at the end when you're rinsing and the shampoo is more dilute. If you look at any shampoo with sulfates, it'll have three or more different surfactants, so those pink tadpoles aren't all the same. If you change the ratio or swap something out, then the shampoo will work differently. Plus, there's a bunch of other ingredients like polymers that aren't shown here. This is still a massive oversimplification. So it isn't as simple as it has sulfates or strip your hair. If it was, it would be so much easier for everyone to find the right shampoo. Good Housekeeping did this test with 10 shampoo and conditioner pairings. Some had sulfates, some didn't. They were salon and supermarket brands. The set that stripped hair dye the least had sulfates. 